We are Gemma and Campbell, and this is our home, Ellie the Eldest. We are currently touring the wild Atlantic Way along Ireland's western coastline, discovering the many breathtaking beaches, castles and unbelievable park ops that we find along the way. This week you join us as we reach the halfway point of our trip, the bustling and vibrant town of Galway, and quickly realise that we have been doing this all wrong. If you are new around here and want to see more of van life adventures in Ireland, then hit that subscribe button and join the gang. But for now, let's check back in as we arrive at one of Ireland's best hidden beaches. Oh god, we are putting Ellie through some seriously challenging roads on this trip. I do not know if a motorhome should be coming down here or not. Oh my god. Hello! What am I doing here? It just seems though that every road is so narrow. Like, no matter where we're going, the roads are narrow with minimal passing places. Wow. Oh. Wow. That is stunning. We've been touring Ireland for the past couple of weeks now and one thing that we always love is just how beautiful the beaches are here. We're down at Silver Strand and it's another beach with Portaloos on it, good parking and a massive big white sandy beach. Yeah, there's hardly anyone here. I mean it's just there's so many of these beaches so I suppose there's plenty of room for everyone to spread out but we just absolutely love it because you can always get a little spot to yourself. We have actually been racing along the northern part of the Wild Atlantic Way and that's just because this is actually our third time on the route and last year we spent quite a bit of time here so we are just kind of going around the areas that we want to get photos of for our new book and once we get south of Galway we'll actually be starting to like slow it down a little bit getting out and about a bit more and exploring the places that we haven't seen before which we're really looking forward to yeah I think that's also a little statement about why we've been rushing so much recently looking that way it is absolutely glorious look at that sunshine it's basking me in the face looking that way behind me it just looks grim it's literally been like that for the past two weeks, on and off showers, and we've just been trying to make the most of the sunshine when we actually get the chance. So also right beside this beach at Silver Strand is a place called the Lost Valley. Turns out that's actually a guided tour that you can do. It's privately owned land and it is actually a working farm, so you can't just go wandering onto it. However, it gives you a really good insight into the history of Ireland, particularly it's noted as one of the best places to go and learn about the uh, history of the famine, because it's one of the most well-preserved old famine villages that was just completely abandoned during that kind of rocky time of our Irish history. The tour takes three hours. And apparently it is actually a very, very interesting one if you have the time. Today, unfortunately, we don't. As I said, we want to bounce up Crowpatrick. But definitely keep it in mind if you are coming out this way. So what was that lovely thing you were just saying, babe? So one thing I think that we are really quite good at is practicing our gratitude and like getting to these beautiful places, stopping, having a wee hug and asking each other what we're grateful for. And what, what did you say? Well, you said you're grateful for me and Ellie and the wind. I'm grateful for those things. Well, maybe not the wind, the sunshine I'm grateful for. Um, and I'm also just grateful for the ability to come and see these beautiful places. Like when I actually think back, you know, before when we were working in healthcare and we were literally just dreaming of being able to do this again and start traveling and make money whilst we travel, which is what we are able to do now. Like we've actually built a business that we can travel and work online. And when I actually like really stop and think about it, I'm like, damn, I'm proud of us. We literally have worked so hard and continue to do so to get where we are. I think I actually just have to like remind, remind myself. myself like, how lucky I am to be like living that dream that I had always. Aww, sentimental thing, aren't you? Cute. <laughs> so yes, if you have a dream that you're chasing, keep chasing it and keep chasing it until you get there because it is worth it. And I think remember your why. Like why are you, why do you want it and why are you doing it? And if you always remember that, you'll get there. There you go. Early on in the video for a little morale speech, but go and get it after this video, of course. Watch the rest of this and then go and chase your dreams. And that, right there, is where we are about to climb. Are you ready? I'm limbering up. I'm excited. Oh, it's tight. Oh my god. I don't know if I'm ready for this. Well, I think I know what we'll be doing after this. Well, that's convenient, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Just happened to want to climb this mountain, right beside Campbell's pub.
Now that is a very, very long way up. Do you believe that's only 700 metres? I don't know if it's just because it's like a big cone, but it's very intimidating from here. So far, we're 20 minutes in, one, one kilometre, 170 metres elevation gain, which means we've still got about another 400 metres to go. And it is just vertical. So I think we are about halfway there, maybe 70% of the way there. It still just looks ridiculously steep. What are you thinking, Boo? I'm tired just looking at that, to be honest. I feel like I ate a massive bowl of porridge right before coming up here and I just have been feeling sick <laughs> the whole walk. So yeah, that is very intimidating right now. The path soon turned from a stony scramble to a set of intricately built steps that wound their way around the side of the cone. It was quite amazing to see the workers actually building these steps all the way up to the top of the hill and we were very grateful for their hard work as it made the journey a lot easier. That's it right there babe. Honestly, I never thought I'd get here. Yes, well done. We made it. <laughs> that was tough. That view is definitely worth it. Oh my god. Well, that was a very passionate and borderline emotional ornithologist. I was gonna say, up until this point, there was a distinct, if not bordering on severe, lack of crows on Crow Patrick. But there you go. So crew enthusiasts, this is the hill for you if you're interested. All right, time to head back to the van. From here, we hit the road on the long journey south, stopping off at the variety of stunning beaches and ancient castles that are dotted along the way, as well as soaking up the beautiful scenery that this part of Ireland is so famous for. Oh my god. Did you look at that? That is a seriously impressive mountain, man. I'm getting major Torridon vibes, like that road that you drive through yeah. to get a Torridon, especially when a sheep are on the road. Beep, beep. What a view, man. As this was the part of Ireland that we had already explored when we visited last summer, we were keen to get a move on so that we could spend more time exploring the undiscovered southern parts of the route. First of all though, no trip to this region of Ireland would be complete without stopping off at its cultural hub, the vibrant city of Galway. Lady in black, she's a lady, and she's wearing black. Not wrong. Wait, wait. What are you up to? You're going out in the town? Um, the sun is shining, so I'm kind of got my legs out again because I feel like the past couple of days it's just been like pouring with rain. Sun's out, we're gonna go wander into Galway because we just love the vibe here and uh, I think it's gonna be one of those places that whenever we come to Ireland we're always gonna stop off here and just go in and soak up all the live music and all the like good vibes around the city. Yeah quick catch up, we've actually been parked up here for the last couple of days now. We're in the Galway car park that we went to last year, it sits right beside the cinema, €6.50 per day and there's loads of other vans here, so it's actually been really dependable because we're working on a very exciting project. By the time this video goes live, we should be ready to announce it. And that's actually where we're starting a second YouTube channel for Destination Earth Guides, which is our publishing company, where we're going to go more into a deep dive of like the actual guides, I guess, for each of the locations that we've written books on. Because as you know, this one is more about kind of our personal stories and the places that we want to go and visit. Whereas that channel is going to be more of an in-depth travel guide channel. So if you're wanting to plan any of your own trips, Go and head over there, give it a follow, give us a little bit of support, we'd really appreciate it as we try and get it off the ground. But for now, Guinness is calling my name. We made our way through the colourful Galway streets in search of some live music and good vibes. And once again, Galway did not disappoint. Well guys, last night was definitely a night. Oh my god, do you want to talk about what happened? Okay, so we had a nice little night in Galway, listened to some music, came back, and we had 
over the past couple of nights there has been a festival on in Galway so we've been kind of hearing loud music and then this was like a lot more like bassy just like kind of house music you said that you heard people having a conversation saying there was like some kind of like rave in a forest but this was at like half four in the morning and this music was like shaking the van it was like so loud it was a bit of a night we just thought let's move before the seagulls and the noise which is off Galway yeah I think the worst part was it wasn't even any noise when we went to sleep about midnight it literally started about two in the morning and that's what woke me up fantastic start to the week so we've now driven about half an hour south of Galway and as we were coming along we saw this pretty cute looking castle so we decided to pull in and go and see what it's all about. Well this is pretty cool. Actually it looks like it's free to go inside. I know and it looks like it's quite ruined but still very well kept. It's really nice how it's like perched out onto the water a little bit. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Elandoran Castle in Scotland. Yeah it seems there's this like big courtyard area when you walk into the front door and then in order to actually go and see the castle itself you're going through another little front door and there's a reception so I believe it might be paid to go in there. Okay so it's actually eight euros admission but if you're looking for something unique to do in Ireland it says there's a sign there that says a medieval banquet is on tonight and you can inquire about the prices of that inside. That sounds like a pretty cool thing to do. If you're interested in something like that then definitely check it out. Yeah, unfortunately it's not for us today as we've got a lot of ground to cover. We need to go and find somewhere to dispose of a toilet and we also need to go and get some more water. And it seems that as soon as you go south of Galway, there's a lot more height barriers. I don't know if it's because it's a lot busier, therefore they're trying to be less accommodating for motorhomes. I don't know. But because of that, we've got about an hour's drive to do and we've got a lot of sights to hit before we actually get to there. just driven past the sign that said Hazel Mountain Chocolate. Are we going? The Hazel. last time we were in, or the first time, six years ago, we were in Ireland. We went to this amazing coffee shop and... Chocolate shop. Chocolate shop, sorry. They didn't... I think that was in Kerry though. I'm I know, not sure it's the same one, but, but we're not sure, but the only way to find out is to do oh. some investigative work for the book. You know, go and make sure this chocolate is all that. So, it's the opposite direction to where we're supposed to be going, but I think we need to go and check it out. It. There it is there. Happy place. Very happy. They've got so many different hot chocolate options. Milk, dark, honey. Fancy wee teapot. I'm really chuffed with this, that is so cute, isn't it? And we realised this morning that it's six months since we got engaged. So this is the perfect little hour away that we can take out of our busy day to just sit and have a little date moment and cheers to that. Any excuse for a hot chocolate really. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. So chocolatey. So this over here is one of our dark chocolates. It's from the Mexican cocoa bean. It is 70%. Oh, nice, thank, thank you. you. Okay, so since the weather is treating us so well, we've decided to spend the evening at one of the nice beaches this evening and go for a little swim, have a pizza out of pizza oven and so I'm going to get creating a dough. Campbell's in the shops just now getting the rest of the ingredients. And um, I just did a really nice big clean this morning, but it's time to get messy again. We also don't actually carry any weighing scales in the van, so extra big pizzas. I've begun a lot of exercise today with the van. Wedding Got a little treat for Gemma. I just love in Aldi they do vegan friendly gummies. So the plan was now to come down to this beach because it looked really good for a park up. Maybe go for a little sunset swim, wake myself up. However, for some reason we always try and time our swims with low tide. When did you say low tide was? Low tide was an hour ago. Now to be fair, sunset's not until closer to high tide. But now that we've got the pizza dough, we thought well, we could just go and swim now whilst we wait for the pizza dough to rise. But we do have something that we can do instead. Something that we've not done in a while. Something we've not done in a long while. Why 
does this always happen? Always too shallow. All right. Do you want to do the honors? Here you go. Mad skills. Oh, big jellyfish. Are there deadly jellyfish in Ireland? No, they won't talk about the boys. playing tonight then? Taylor Swift. How did I know you were going to say <laughs> no, that? I'm kidding. Ellen. Literally, this van has been nothing but Taylor Swift for the past month. I know, I don't even have tickets. I know, I think we're making up for it. Can't afford tickets. So no, we're holding off for Glastonbury. Yeah. We've heard that she's <laughs> rumoured to be around the UK and like maybe headline in Glastonbury year. next year. She's trying to convert me into a Swifty. So she is. How is that looking? Our pizza dough, you ready? Oh. Tiny. <laughs> it works really well in the house, but it just doesn't rise when you're in a van. So, right, it'll just be a really good stone baked pizza. Oh, it's still going to be good. Isn't oh, it? I'm so excited. Here we go. Woo! Oh my goodness, look at them. Mmm, I'm excited for this. Okay, so our plan was to actually just spend the night here. However, I've just noticed there's a signpost over here that basically says no overnight parking. There's no camping. No overnight parking. But it does also say no horses and no cars. If you look over here behind me, there's a beach. If it's referring to that beach, there's horses and cars that have driven onto the beach to collect the horses. So I don't know how accurate or how well enforced these rules actually are. I always feel quite bad because there has another been another van pull in right beside us and we said we were going to stay if another van arrived, but we're just not feeling it. Not feeling a 1500 euro fine, are no. we babe? Or seagulls or people driving in and out. So we thought... Yeah, we're gonna move. Just... I do feel bad though because um, I, 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 I never know if another van pulls in and thinks I will just park here because there's a motorhome. <laughs> Safety in numbers and then we ditch them at half past nine at night and they're just left there stranded by themselves. So I feel bad. <laughs> Sorry. I do look quite happy playing board games. Sorry, we betrayed you. We did actually spy bins though, so we're going to do a quick little it? bin and dash before we move on to our camps for the night. That is the best site on the World Atlantic Way. Number one tourist attraction on the World Atlantic Way, bins. 